Hello, hello, today we are going to overclock uh, Intel i7-5820K. So, this is the CPU, 5820K. It's also, this guide is also relevant to 5930K owners and 5960X because it's the same CPU family. And the base clock for this is 3.3, uh, boosting to 3.6, which is pretty low. So we're going to have to overclock it to get more performance out of it. Using um, Asus X99 Pro motherboards, I uh, consider these switches. Uh, I advise you to switch to do these switches all the way to the left to make sure that the, everything is disabled. Your XMP is disabled, EPU disabled, TPU disabled if you're going to overclock it. It's not necessary, but it's best to do that. To do that, um, power down your PC. Switch these uh, switches right here to the left, uh, power it back on. So there we go. That is the hardware we're using. And for the software that I will be using today is, I'm not going to go into BIOS. I want to use the Asus's AI Suit 3 to do this overclock. And also we'll need time. So make sure that you don't need your PC for anything uh, within the next few hours, maybe even more, uh, depending on how well you want to stress test it later on for signs of for any signs of instability to elim eliminate any um, any unnecessary shutdowns to your PC later on. And also, you'll need some software, which is all going to be free. I'm going to leave the links in the description below to download it. It's hardware monitor to monitor your core um, temperatures and core clocks and IDA64 to stress your system. IDA64 is a paid program but you can use a 30 day trial, you can download it and use 30 day trial without any registration and 30 days is more than enough for you to overclock your CPU. So once you have all this, once you have the time, once you have the software um, I'm sorry for that noise, that is the airplane behind the window. Uh, I can't sit with the windows closed at the moment because it's quite warm. Alright, so you go ahead and select your AI Suit 3. Bring it up, this is the way it looks. Go ahead and click on the TPU right here. And as you can see it's already overclocked 4.5 right now. Uh, but you, what you have to do is select group tuning and it will look like something like this yeah 3.6 from the start and also this will be set to adaptive uh, everything else don't touch it leave it on default leave it on auto the only two things that we will be changing is this ratio cpu ratio and also core voltage cpu core voltage so I'm not going to do a step by step. I'm going to do it the same. I'm going to show you the way that I've done it, uh, which is called a probably safe overclock. But it's pretty much safe. I mean, to break your hardware, you really must have very bad luck. And in most cases, it is a manufacturer's defect anyway. So. You know, bear that in mind, but as I said, every piece of equipment nowadays is pretty much idiot proof, so anything goes wrong, the system just shuts down and um, the settings are dropped to default. And if they're not, then you go into BIOS and change them to default yourself. So basically, this is the way it should look like. Only select user defined in core voltage and then start changing your CPU ratio. What I suggest is a 4.5 ratio, so 45, excuse me, 45 ratio and select a 1.3 volt uh, core voltage. Once you've done that, hit apply, yes, and this is your CPU overclocked to 4.5. Make sure that you select group tuning, don't forget about it. And that's when we start using our soft other software. 
you use your hardware monitor to monitor the temperatures and you go into IDA64, select tools, system stability test and then select these four options and start stress test. And what we're looking for is for this CPU usage to stay at 100% at all times so that there are no dips 100% at all times and um, also keeping an eye on the temperature over here so if it's high if one of the cores is overheating it means that it could happen that uh, there is an air bubble trapped in a thermal paste somewhere or you haven't applied your thermal paste correctly if you do see that if one of the cores goes way too high on the temperature stop everything and then go ahead and reapply your thermal compounds start over again uh, for the cooling you obviously need to make sure that you have sufficient cooling I'm currently using Corsair H100i uh, all-in-one cooling solution I prefer normally prefer water cooled but I haven't water I haven't done the custom water cooling to this uh, PC just yet because I'm still in the process of alteration to it so I'm going to alter it and um, basically this is it we wait for about 10-15 minutes making sure that it the system runs stable as you can see the all six cores are working at 4.5 gigahertz right now uh, clocked to the max stressed to the max and the temperature stays around uh, between for the package it stays between 80 and 70 to jumps up and down this is fine um, it's not desirable but it's fine anything above 85 as you can see it was max 85 anything above 85 is already uh, I mean it, it is it is disturbing so you shouldn't be running your CPU hot because this is what is killing chips is the temperature it's not the cores it's not it's not the core clock that kills the uh, CPU it's the temperature whilst you're running it but you know bearing in mind that this is at 100% load everything at 100% load you will not have this in real world scenarios when uh, when you're gaming or when you are uh, rendering videos 3d it's not going to happen it's not going to work up to 100 percent all the time this is uh, absolutely synthetic so i've been rumbling on about it <laughs> for a while now let me get to this stress testing and stability testing now so whilst you're stability testing it for about 10 15 minutes if your system crashes if it goes to blue screen then you know that your your overclock is not stable and what you do is you go ahead and uh, either decrease the core ratio uh, CPU ratio or increase your core voltage to try and stabilize your core uh, on the CPU this is one way to go but if everything is fine and your 4.5 gigahertz overclock works absolutely fine at 3.5 and 3.0 and there are no blue screen no drops below 100 percent and you've tested it and it's absolutely fine what you can do uh, or what you, you really should do not can what you should do is uh, start tweaking your core voltage if you're happy with your cpu ratio you can start tweaking your core voltage so go from 1.3 to 1.28 or 1.29 whatever you like you just select the steps that you are going to make um, I like doing it in increments of uh, zero point uh, at point at 0.01 so from 1.3 I would go to 1.29 uh, hit apply hit apply and then stress test it again run the stress test if it's fine then you go ahead and change the core voltage again lower and lower and lower because lower core voltage means uh, less power wasted 
and also less temperature on your cores, uh, less heat in your room. So it is important, right? And as I said, I was able to achieve 1.25 and it is running stable at 4.5 gigahertz 4.5 uh, with the core voltage of 1.25 but all cpus are different and uh, if you don't know about silicon lottery just then just google silicon lottery and read all about it and because all uh, all the chips all even unlocked chips they're not the same they have different overclocking capabilities I may be able to get this uh, CPU t all the way to uh, 4.9 or 5 gigahertz. Who knows? I haven't tried it, but I will definitely will, and it will be probably something crazy as uh, uh, core voltage is 1.4 or even higher. But you know, you may only be able to achieve 4.2 or 4.3. So bear that in mind. If you use an overclock and it doesn't work, uh, go back on your CPU ratio. Start from something like 4.2 and 1.27 to be safer, you know? And then just work your way up from here. After you've done it, you can save your profile using this button here and use it. Anytime you're gaming or doing anything CPU intensive, then just load this profile and it's going to be all good. Your core will be high, performance will be high, high FPS, uh, low rendering times. Happy days. So, yeah, this is actually the first CPU that I'm using um, AI SU3 to overclock. It was uh, a lot easier than in uh, in BIOS because you don't have to uh, keep on uh, restarting your your system and mashing delete to get into BIOS, change everything in, in BIOS, and then loading the system again and stress testing it. It is way way too easy to do in this uh, suit. So yeah, I definitely recommend you try this, and uh, it is easy to do. And uh, the performance, the extra performance that you get is, is, is so good. You just get so much running at stock. If I assume that buying an unlocked processor, you are thinking about overclocking. So definitely overclock it. Right, so that was the, my um, guide for the overclocking. I hope it helped you. And um, if it did, and I'd appreciate if you come back and share your experience with us in the comments section below. Just to drop a little note of what you were able to achieve with your 5820K or maybe 5930K or whatever else you have. And um, as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, RG out.